Hi, this is James Haney, executive producer of Starship Excelsior, a Star Trek fan audio drama, and I'm pleased to welcome you to an experiment. Audio drama is just what it sounds like, a theater of the mind that plays out inside your headphones. It's a revival of old-time radio storytelling for the digital podcasting age. Starship Excelsior is normally found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or a zillion other audio services. Now, some audio dramas cross-post their episodes to YouTube, usually with an empty video track or a single static image, just so YouTubers can find their work. We were never quite comfortable with that, though. YouTube is a visual medium, and by definition, our audio drama has no visuals, so Starship Excelsior has never become available regularly on YouTube. But in 2020, one of our fantastic fans, Peter Stein... Hey everyone, I'm Peter Stein. ...came to us with an idea for a novel, low-budget animation technique that he had recently developed for use in a role-playing game. Built on assets that he had hand-created in Star Trek Online, and fan art generously shared by many creators. Peter offered to animate Excelsior episodes using this technique, and the video you're watching is our first full attempt. I think it's fantastic. Peter has taken an audio medium and added a whole new dimension to it. Excelsior is still very much an audio drama, first and foremost, but now it's an audio drama you can watch. Peter, thank you so much. Uh, like the show itself, we expect our animations will improve over time. If you have suggestions, we'd love to hear them. This is new territory for us. It's not Pixar, yet. Yet. But it's a whole lot more interesting than watching a single static image for 90 minutes while an audio track plays in the background. So, hello YouTubers. After 14 years, we are delighted to finally welcome you aboard the Starship Excelsior. Please enjoy this animation of our Season 2 episode, No One Gets Out Alive, by Chris Chan Roberson, which originally aired on December 26, 2009. And stay tuned, stay tuned for Season 1 episodes coming soon. During 2009, Star Trek Excelsior asked its fans to take part in a script-writing contest for a very special episode to be presented on Boxing Day of 2009. Out of the initial wave of submissions, the producers chose five outstanding finalists. After much consultation and debate, a clear winner emerged. Chris Chan Roberson's No One Gets Out Alive. Once again, the producers of Star Trek Excelsior would like to thank everyone who participated in the script writing contest, but we also express our deepest gratitude to all of our listeners who make this labor of love so worthwhile for all of us. Now we invite you to relax and enjoy a special Boxing Day special edition of Star Trek Excelsior. No one gets out alive. Last round. The score is tied. Possession to Commander Dovan. Let's move it along, Ref. I want to put the commander out of her misery. We'll see about that, sir. Inbound. Now. Ref! You heard the lady. Yeah, yeah. Dovin's gonna score, somebody! I have him! Careful, sir. I see her. Brawl, on your left. I'll spike you. Not a chance. <laughs> ha. One down, one to go. Brawl, on your six. I see... Oh. Brawl, you all right? He's fine. I can take a little pain, sir. Then get up and flank her, Lieutenant. No foul. Clean action. The disc remains in play. Got it! Goal! Score! <laughs> and match pull! Commander, Whoa. I'm right behind... What? Uh, oh. Jehoshaphat. Are you two all right? I, uh, I lost my footing on the ramp. Uh, Rawl broke my fall. 
I live to serve, sir. If it helps, Lieutenant, we did win. Yes, you did. Hooray for victory. Now, could someone is escort me to sick bay? Commander Dovan, I'm glad to see you made it to the bridge in one piece. It seems I missed quite a spirited match. Yubari's hopping mad at the ref and everybody else. Rawls in sick bay with two broken ribs, and I just about split my head open. If that was a spirited round of Parisi squares, I'd hate to see what it takes to qualify as violent. Incidentally, care to join us for the rematch? <laughs> Space is dangerous enough. That's the easy way out. What's that big rock on the main viewer? We think it's a Class S planetoid. We think? Our sensors can't seem to get a clear lock beneath the surface. Also, it's rogue. I thought you said it was Class S. I did. Class S planets don't go rogue. They break apart at the heliopause. Class S planets also don't block sensors. Nonetheless... Huh. That's weird. When's the away team beaming down? As soon as you assemble one, Commander. Not quite as exciting as Parisa Squares, but... That's a chance I'm willing to take, Captain. Helm, plot a course for that planetoid. Best speed. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the... Duh, who am I kidding? This is the starship Excelsior. We use an ancient gateway to explore the farthest reaches of the galaxy. Our assignment is to find out what we can and come back alive. The rest is rhetoric. Larry Phelan as Commander Alcar Dovan. Samuel Gillis as Lieutenant Alex Laurel. Michael Liebman as Alex Roll. Emily Potter as Dr. Melissa Sharp. And Caitlin Haney as Lieutenant Asuka Yubari. This is a surprise. Agreed. Lieutenant, are you detecting an atmosphere in here? Yes, sir. Can we breathe it? Yes, sir. It's as dry as a desert and too warm by half. But the oxygen-nitrogen balance is perfect. We'll be fine. Good enough. Deactivate life support belts. Dovan to Excelsior. Can you hear me? Roll. Help me set up those signal enhancers. Yes, sir. How's that, Captain? Much better. Report, Commander. That natural subterranean tunnel we picked as our beam-down site? Not natural. It's big, artificial, and poorly lit. And all the lighting's red. Red's usually not a good sign. Unless you happen to like emergencies. Is there breathable atmosphere? Yes, Captain. Then we can rule out life support failure as the cause. Unless they were argon helium breathers who suffocated in an oxygen atmosphere. Are you trying to be difficult, Commander? Usually. If we rule out life support failure, it means that whatever caused the emergency could still be present. 
Proceed with caution. We'll monitor you from here. Yes, Captain. Yubari, Rawl, let's move out. So, Lieutenant, when's our rematch? Right after you tell me how many credits you paid for the game this morning. Paid? To buy the ref. Hold up and cut the chatter. What? Oh. Devance, you found something. The tunnel just opened up into a large cavern. How large? You ever been to the Temple of Agrajag in the Iconian ruins on Union? No. Oh. Well, it's very big. Pretty much like this cavern. What else? I'm seeing dozens of pillars around the chamber spaced at regular intervals. They're almost opaque, but I can make out humanoid shapes in the nearest one. Suspended animation? Unknown. Tricorders still aren't getting through whatever they used to build this place. One moment. Anson Neverson, when you get the chance, would you mind running? Cortez to engineering. Never mind, Ibsen. Lorak here, Captain. There's a small situation on the planetoid. We need to increase our sensor resolution by a significant margin in order to break through some interference. Sensors are running pretty close to the maximum already, Captain. I can squeeze out a few billion more pixels for you, but it'll mean a physical modification on the main deflector. Sounds like you'll have to do a cakewalk. Get on it immediately. Sorry, Captain? Cakewalk? Did I say that? I'm sorry. I'm in a spacewalk. My drill sergeant at the academy said that I moved through zero-G with such ease that I made a spacewalk look like a cakewalk. Really? My academy spacewalks usually ended up looking like lunch. At least, that was the only thing I could see on the inside of my helmet. <laughs> I'll let you know when we're finished. Give us an hour. Lorak out. Adal, Harkless, Ernest, and Rota. Suit up. We're going for a walk. What do you make of it? For all the world, it looks like a sick bay to me. And no matter how much I try to look at it otherwise, I keep seeing the ward level on Starbase 911. Most hospitals don't have this many bio beds on one level. Can you imagine the din in here if they were all filled with patients? There have to be hundreds of them. Maybe it was a hospital for the mute. Or maybe not. Have you ever seen this many sharp edges in a hospital bay? Only in Klingon hospitals. Klingons aren't my ideal practitioners of medicine. Commander, over here. What have you got? I found a data terminal over here. There's still a little power running to it. What do you make of it? If I had to guess, I'd say... Origin is the Delta Quadrant. Oh, very astute, Lieutenant. A piece of Delta Quadrant technology here, in the middle of the Delta Quadrant. However, I'm feeling a hunch coming on. Delta Quadrant species, specimens in stasis, large operating room. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Lieutenant? I'm thinking that the next time we play Parisa Squares, I'm checking to see if you're using a regulation mallet. Ha <laughs> very funny, Lieutenant. By the way, it was 50 credits in an ice-cold bottle of Canar. What? You asked how much the referee cost, but I digress. Dovan to Cortez. Cortez here. I think these are the ruins of a Vidian base, Captain. Vidian? This is pretty far outside their core territory, Commander. No one's even seen them since Voyager came home. Can you confirm? We're going to try tying into a data terminal we found. Stand by. Okay, Lieutenant. Fire it up. Coronon. Yep, <laughs> Established and locked. Repeating. Medical program Gavi online. Damage detected. Operational efficiency estimated at 47%. All core system functions are stable and ready for instruction. Captain, a medical hologram just appeared in front of us. Negative. Holograms are obsolete. I am Gavi. I'm a product of particle synthesis. 
a new technique for dynamic AI projection, pioneered by Dr. Inara Lasotha. As a prototype, I represent a 30% increase in tactile and spatial sensitivity over the most advanced holographics available. Tactile sensitivity? Sounds like a surgical hologram. Looks like flesh and blood. Gavi, can you please hold out your hand? Feels like flesh and blood, too. Remarkable. Gavi, not to be blunt, but where is everyone? What the? What was that? Captain, we were just swept by some kind of a... A bright white light. It happened here, too. I'm upgrading to yellow alert. Combat measures will not be necessary. Your officers have been scanned. That is all. Scanned by who? You? It is not within my ability to answer that question. Let me guess. Database corruption is extensive. Lieutenant? Never mind, sir. Please wait for the completion of current diagnostic and correction program before requesting additional restricted information. Great. Uh, 0922, sir. That means we barely have 40 minutes left to finish up this job. Let's push a little harder, people. Heartless, continue to monitor the available bandwidth between the deflector and the computer core. Hey, Dow, make sure the EPS conduits don't blow up in my face while I'm routing plasma from the deflector grid. Wait. On second thought, Hey, Dow, I think you want me dead, so let's put you on the anti-proton duty with Heartless. Rhoda, you monitor the EPS bleed off. And somebody hand me a hyperspanner. You sure a mega spanner won't do the trick, Lieutenant? Captain! Thoughts to meeting you out here. Uh, did you lose something? Just my self-control. I couldn't resist the spacewalk. If I start bragging about cakewalks without proving myself out here, I won't have the credibility to last 18 months on this ship. Captain, while it's very nice to see you out here, the modifications we're making to the defector are delicate and, quite frankly, dangerous. We're already working under a time constraint. I don't want to have to worry about your safety on top of that. Hmm. I was hoping you could use some help. But the one thing you shouldn't have to worry about is my safety. I'll head in and de But if those modifications aren't ready in the 36 minutes, 12 seconds you promised me... Understood, Captain. Now, are you sure you want a hyperspanner? Mega spanner will do just fine. Go there to Excelsior! Cortez here. What's happened, Commander? Captain, the pillars just opened up. The stasis pods? They're not stasis pods, Captain. Then what are they? Bodies, Captain. It's dead bodies all the way down. Great crawling. Calm down, Dovan. What do you mean, bodies? Sorry, Captain. Forty or fifty bodies in a pillar, close to a thousand total. All different species, all different ages, genders, and they're all in different stages of dissection. Chest cavities open, exposed, musculature tearing. Some are completely shredded, dismembered, and the look on their faces says they were awake for this. Stand by, Commander. I'll be right down. Cortez out. Lieutenant Loron, I'll have to take my leave. Contact me when your modifications are complete. I have them. Now, sir. First thing we're going to do is take this mega spanner and hurl it into depth of space. Next thing we're going to do is someone's going to get me a hyperspanner. We're going to make our dead line. The dead bodies are someone else's problem. Captain. Commander. There. I've never seen such sadism. The Jem'Hadar were butchers, but they just wanted you dead. They didn't care one way or another if you felt the pain. For a race as medically advanced as the Vidians, I have to say I agree. This is barbaric. The Vidians stole organs, kidnapped healthy people, conducted wildly unethical experiments. But this looks like torture for torture's sake. 
I thought this was beyond them. They were all dying of the same disease. What's that line of Trasus the Urbane? The two great insanities are love and death. Excuse me, sirs. Uh, I, uh... Speak up, Lieutenant. My chest hurts quite a bit. I'm not sure how, but I think I must have accidentally rebroken the ribs Dr. Sharp fixed this morning. With your permission, I'd like to return to the ship. I can escort him up, Captain. Perfect. I need someone on the ship in any case. I've decided to stay down here to investigate this Gavi. Make it so. Now, Ensign Des, you're going to have to take this ADR supplement twice a day until your forepaw is fully healed. Otherwise, let me make this very clear, your immune system will attack the stitches and your paw will go completely bald. I know how much that matters to patients, and, of course, no more tennis while the treatment lasts. You're the second sports-related injury I've seen today. The first one was... Dr. Sharp? Well, speak of the devil. We were just talking about you, Rawl. What brings you back here? Did Ubari beat you in the rematch? Not this side of Antares, Bend. But... I'm having some pains in my chest. You're a pain in my rear. Hop on the bio bed. You're running a fever. How bad are the aches? Oh... They were a lot worse when I beamed up. Now they're not so bad. Rawl, are you okay? Can you get up? I need some help in here. Rawl, can you hear me? Gavi, my name is Captain Rachel Cortez. I'm from the United Federation Starship Excelsior. What can you tell me about this facility? Is it Vidian? Unable to answer query. Please hold for additional 1% program advancement. I think what she meant to say was hold on a sec. I'd rather not. This place gives my human half the willies. Sharp to Cortez. Cortez here. Go ahead, Doctor. We have a serious problem, Captain. Program progress at 50%. I am now able to answer a limited number of your questions. What was that? It's not important. Your report, Doctor? Rawl has fallen ill. My scans are reporting something I can't believe. Out with it, Doctor. Lieutenant Rawl has contracted the Vidian phage. What? I've confirmed the diagnosis three times, Captain. Rawl is infected with the same disease that devastated the entire Vidian race. Impossible. Only Vidians can contract the phage. I'm afraid your information is no longer the case, Captain. I have a message for you from the last survivors of the Vidian people. No one gets out alive. Captain's Log Supplemental The Vidian Surgical Program Gavi has informed us, belatedly, that this entire planetoid is a Vidian booby trap. I now have an officer in sickbay, dying from a disease for which we have no cure. Officers Rawl and Dovan have both been confined to sickbay until we can determine the strength, infectiousness, and vector of the contagion. Meanwhile, We hope to learn as much as we can from the Vidian computer system. Laurent de Sigbay, I have another suggestion. We could probably increase the sensitivity in the biofilter by taking the targeting sensors offline and placing them in a redundancy button that would allow for multiple signal analyses without signal degradation. You know that kind of modification would be well beyond my technical ability. 
Even if you hadn't made up half those words, just so you could convince me to let you back on the ship. I can keep my EVA suit on and... Sorry, Alex. Those are my orders. You and your engineering team stays outside, and that's the safest place for you right now. What's the matter? Not enjoying your cakewalk? I didn't say that. The captain did. Who told you about that? Hello? Doctor? Dan. Sir, do you want your mega scanner back? Shut up, Hogless. I am now able to tell you everything you wish to know about this facility, Captain. This base was constructed by the last members of the Vidian race. What do you mean, last? We assume this base was a derelict. Because the phage was cured almost ten years ago, thanks to the work of Dr. Dinara Pell and the Think Tank. The Think Tank cure proved to be no more than a stopgap measure, something to push the phage into remission long enough for the Think Tank to make off with its expensive payment and leave us to our fates. When the phage returned, it was mutated and a hundred times worse. This base was established as the last refuge of the Vidian race in a last-ditch attempt to return the disease to its earlier, less virulent form before the Vidian gene pool became too small to reproduce itself. We were not successful. Did the mutation allow the phage to infect non-Vidians? Not initially. Not initially? Scientists working at this research base deliberately induced a second mutation, which allowed for cross-species infection. What? You monsters! Some believe that bringing the phage to every humanoid race would force the galaxy to focus all its collective energy and intelligence on a cure. Others simply wanted to inflict the pain they felt in their death throes upon all the billions of lifeforms who had never lifted a finger to help the dying Fidian race. They tried to develop a means to infect people from a distance? A long-range phage deployment weapon? Affirmative. Were they successful? Negative. Several avenues of research appeared promising. The only technique implemented in field testing was the infection of patients via subspace carrier wave, but its effectiveness proved limited to short range. How short is short range? Okay, I've thought about this long and hard, and here it goes. The best meal I've ever had with my mom's spiceless hasperat. All right, first, spiceless hasperat? What the hell does that even mean? Sounds something any Bajoran recognizes as hasperat. Second, your answer doesn't count. I've never eaten your mommy's cooking. We were talking about the best meals we've had at restaurants. I've never really been one for eating out. Then what did you do on dates? I was never much of a dater either. The best meal I ever had was the house gumbo at Cisco's. Is that on right, sir? Earth, New Orleans. I'll have to remember that. Cisco's. I could always use a new recipe for the replicator. <laughs> Cisco's doesn't give out recipes. The last time I checked with the manager, he called replicators a menace to the taste buds. A bit like, uh, spiceless hash for that. Mm. <sighs> Alright, I can see when I'm outnumbered. This Cisco fellow sounds a bit too eccentric for me. What do you recommend, Rota? I believe it is generally acknowledged that the best restaurant in the universe is a place called Lilyway. I don't know that one. Neither do I. I suppose Milliways is a bit off the beaten path. Then the best earth food I ever consumed. I believe it'd be the lingonberry mousse at Bath House, across the San Francisco Bridge, near the Vulcan Memorial. Oh, they do give out their recipe. Sounds more like my kind of place. How about you, Harkless? Got the best meal of your life? I think Harkless fell asleep. Harkless, not sleeping on the job, are you? Harkless? Chief, hand me a tricorder. What's the map? Tricorder, now. Oh, no.
Terrakeen. I need more Terrakeen. We're out, Doctor. Replicators can't keep up with the demand. How long for the new batch? Ten minutes, Doctor. But if new patients keep streaming in at this rate... I know. It'll be gone before we can cover half the sick bed. Damn. All right, everyone, switch us to Terrasol and hope that the tides us over until the patient wave stops. Alka, yes, yes, grab a hyper spray and make yourself useful. Yes, ma'am. Melissa, my name is Melissa. Doctor, help me. Another one, Adela, get him on a bio bed, then put him in the queue for painkillers. Rawl, you must have come into contact with something, someone, on your way to sick bay. Doctor, I promise. There was no one. Commander Dovan was with me. He can vouch for that. There are 23 people in here who started showing symptoms of the phage at exactly the same time, and we're getting another one every 60 seconds. If they didn't get it from you, where the hell did it come from? Doctor, I promise. What did you find in the transporter biofilters? Any sign of the phage? Biofilters turned up blank, which means either you caught the phage here on the Excelsior, which doesn't seem likely, or the phage can't be detected before infection has fully set in. So we're back where we started. I'm sorry. We're still pursuing other avenues. I know you are. But right at this moment, since there's no cure in the offing, I really need some more pain meds. I'm sorry, Alex. You've already had quite a bit, and there's not enough to go around. Doctor, you don't understand. The pain is so intense, I can't see your face clearly. There's got to be something... I've got him. Keep working. I'm sorry, Alex. Alcar, I need help getting this man on a bio bed. Lieutenant, I don't have time to listen to another one of your- Hawkless is dead. What? He's dead, Doctor. Dead of the phage. Captain's Log. The entire crew has been infected. The death toll now stands at 24. In the Vidian database, we search desperately for an answer. All right, Gavi, let's try this again from the top. What is a complete list of known symptoms of the phage? Stage 1. Severe to excruciating joint pain. Stage 2. Internal organs undergo necrotizing vasculitis. What's that mean? The afflicted's internal organs dissolve and are either vomited or excreted involuntarily. Now we're getting somewhere. How many stages are there? In theory, there are four. In theory? No victim has ever survived stage two. Most Vidians euthanized themselves as soon as stage one was fully developed. Those who chose to persist typically died of pain before stage three could begin. Was there any treatment? In addition to various pills, injections, and chemical inhibitors, necrotic tissue was typically debrided from the body. Skin removal. Affirmative. That explains why they always looked like mummies. Skin grafts. For their entire lives. But where did they get all that much uninfected tissue? From whomever they could steal it, I suspect. Affirmative. How long do we have? Typical lifespan following the onset of traditional phage range between 4.2 minutes and 79 years. Following the onset of the mutated phage resulting from the think tank mutation, the maximum lifespan was 3 weeks, 1 hour. Following the onset of alien affected phage propagated via short range subspace carrier waves, unknown. Unknown. The strain was never tested. Do you have access to simulator results? Academic papers, anything of that sort? Some. Would you like me to upload our database to your vessel's computer banks? Your entire database? Affirmative. That would be invaluable. Please do. I comply. Cortez to Sharp. We're transmitting data to you now. It should be the entire Vidian medical database. If we're lucky, you'll find the key to the sickness in there. We're receiving it. 
Thank God the first file in here is a recipe for a stronger painkiller. The terracane's becoming ineffective. The terrasol isn't even touching it anymore. I'll start replication right away. Very well. Is there anything else I need to be made aware of, Doctor? Since quarantine is useless, I've let the engineers come back in from the deflector dish. And I've converted main shuttle bay to a triage facility. Standard procedure, Captain. Understood. If you need anything else, Doctor, take it to Commander Dovan. Yubari and I are going through this data as quickly as we can, and we can't afford any unnecessary interruptions. Yes, Captain. I have to get back to my patients. Of course. Cortez out. Lieutenant, are you okay? I'm fine, sir. Your skin's pale, and you're grinding your teeth so hard sparks are shooting out of your mouth. I am fine. Head back up to the Excelsior and get some rest. That's an order. Captain! Please, Captain, if I'm one of the unlucky ones, if I die... You're not going to die, Lieutenant. If I die, it's important that I die on my feet, Captain. Working. Doing my job. Sharp is whipping up some fresh painkillers. When she sends down the first batch, I want you to take both hyposprays. Are we clear? Both. But, Captain, you're in just as much... Both, Lieutenant. Or I'm sending you back to the ship right now. Thank you, Captain. The answers are here in the Vidian computer system. Some other database. Some other stockpile. Somewhere there's a cure. Let's find it. Enter. Give me some good news, Doctor. Did the database help? Do we have a cure? Melissa, what's the matter? The captain told me that, while she continues her research on the planet, you're now in effective command. Great. Does that mean I can put my feet on her desk? Medical information the captain sent me. The research gleaned from the experiments they ran down there? Yes. Those research subjects were tortured, weren't they? Looks that way. I swear this oath by Apollo Physician, by Asclepius, by Health, and by all the gods and goddesses, in whatever place that I enter, I will enter to help the sick and heal the injured, and I will do no harm. I will give no deadly medicine to any person if asked, and in like manner I will not give to any person a pest- All right. Now that I'm captain, new rule. No extended quotations in the ready room. So you memorized the Hippocratic Oath. What about it? I can't use medical information gained from torture. It violates every tenet of medical ethics. That's ridiculous. It doesn't hurt them. They're already dead. This would desecrate their memories and validify the actions of the Vidians who did this to them. No, it wouldn't. What the Vidians did to them, they're doing to us now. If we don't live through this, the Vidians win. Don't you think their victims would want us to live? Wouldn't they want their deaths to mean something? I'm completely comfortable with this. You're comfortable with us living because they died. Tell me, Alcar, what's an uncomfortable number for you? Our lives for a hundred deaths? Five hundred. A thousand? All right, Melissa. I'll give you what you want. You mean, we're not going forward with the database research? That's not what you want, Doctor. You want to live through this as much as I do. Then what do I want, Alcar? Absolution. Dr. Melissa Sharp, by the power vested in me by Captain Cortez and Starfleet Command, you are hereby directly ordered to proceed with medical research derived from unethical, torturous, and fatal scientific experiments carried out on involuntary victims. Your ethical objections are hereby noted in my log and overridden, despite your strong protest. This one's on me. You're welcome. How do you feel, Captain? Don't ask. The more I read the Vidian medical logs, the less I think about the pain. But I'm getting eye strain. What about you? I feel better, Captain. 
Maybe a quick break will do you good. I'll keep reading. All right. Thank you, Lieutenant. Gavi, I have a question. I am prepared to answer questions. Were the Vidians religious? Did they pray to higher powers? Once, the Vidians believed in many gods. By the time the Phage had finished its work, however, they believed in only one. Its name was Phage. Their purpose was to bring about the death of that god. When they believed they had triumphed, they celebrated. The god smote them for their arrogance. When I was young, my mother was dying of a rare exotic virus. Just when it seemed hopeless, she went into remission. Her immune system started working again, and for a few days, we had hope. Then it came back and it killed her. When she was on her deathbed, she told me that I shouldn't be sad, because I'd see her in my dreams. But when I thought about it, that made me even more sad, because if I dreamt about her, she wouldn't be there when my eyes opened in the morning. I regret thinking that, because I have, to this day, not had a single dream about my mother. May I share with you an old pity and saying? I can't think of any reason not to. It is said that the whole world is a dream, and death be the interpreter. Fascinating. What does it mean? I hope that you will soon be able to tell me. I hope that I won't. What about the Vidians? Weren't you able to learn anything from their example? The depths of those who lived here were not... I would prefer to draw my lessons from others. I understand. These people ended their lives trying to take the galaxy with them. Not the best interpretation of the dream. When the Vidians here learned that they were the last surviving Vidians, when the mutation arrived here at the research base, they surrendered. They stopped looking for the cure. Anarchy broke out. It took four days for the 2,000 Vidians who lived and worked here to whittle themselves down to 12. It was those 12 who agreed to a ceasefire. Those 12 who began the project to spread the phage to other races. And here we are. Indeed, Captain. Captain, I found something! Let's hear it, Lieutenant. I was looking into the not-completed research. The theories the Vidians were working on, but hadn't attempted experimentally yet. Everything not in the database we sent to the Excelsior, then? Exactly. This theory looks promising. It involved thwarting the antigens produced by Klingon genetic code. How successful were they? Like I said, they never began the experiments. All they knew was that, despite the mutations they'd made to the phage, the Klingons remained immune. When the scientists here died, they were still working on getting around that immunity. They had narrowed the cause down to a collection of Klingon antigens, but never had the opportunity to modify the phage genetic code to counter it. So Klingons are still immune. Ensign Enderby is part Klingon, isn't he? Do you think we could harvest his antigens and replicate them for the rest of the crew? That's really a question you'd have to ask Dr. Sharp. But let me see if the Vidians wrote anything. Yes. We can harvest the antigens. Then let's get on. The harvesting process is fatal. What do you mean? If we harvest Mr. Enderby's antigens, we get one healthy crew and one dead half-Klingon. That isn't an option. Keep looking. Captain, I know it would be unthinkable under normal circumstances, but shouldn't we at least consider- If it's unthinkable for a Starfleet officer, it's unthinkable for a Starfleet officer. We're not killing a member of my crew. This conversation is over. Yes, Captain. But I need to take a break. The pain. I understand. Take a walk. I'll hold down the fort here. Thank you, Captain. The important thing is that we have each other's backs. 
And if security division tries to make a move? We're not going to let them make a move. What about Rota? He doesn't wear engineering gold. He's not one of us. I like him too, but when the chips come down... Don't stop chatting on my account, subcrew. Sir, are the rumors true? What rumors? They say that Dr. Sharps developed a cure. But that right now, it's only being administered to senior officers. Because there isn't enough to go around. I just want to make sure that when you start distributing it to the crew, that it will be a fair and equal lottery. Lottery? I thought... We agreed it should go to the families first. That's there not is no cure! Come on, people. You're Excelsis. You know better than to listen to rumors. Now stay calm, focused, and do your jobs. Believe it or not, we've gotten through worse than this. And the Dominion War didn't involve anybody drawing straws for life or death. And the phage is nothing next to the Borg. Now, if that speech wasn't inspirational enough for you, go to the holodeck and watch an old movie. But that's all you're gonna get from me. All hands, this is First Officer Dovan. I know you're all in pain. And I know you're all unsure of what's going to happen to you, your friends, and your families. We are doing everything we can to safeguard this crew. And I vow to you, we will succeed. No stone will be left unturned in search of a cure. In the meantime, stay focused on your duties, eschew rumors, and remember, we are one crew. This ship can't run without a crew, and this crew can't run if it allows any division to be sown within its ranks. Keep working. Dovan out. No stone left unturned. A vow to find a cure. You shouldn't make promises you can't keep, Commander. If I can't keep this one, Adao, it won't matter. I'll be as dead as the rest of you. You borrowed to Dovan. Dovan here. Sir, I need to talk to you about something. Where's Captain Cortez? She's incapacitated. Which means you have to make the decisions now. Which particular decision are you calling to talk to me about? I think we'd better speak about this in private, sir. We found something. Understood. Mr. Warren, you have the con. Somewhere. Excuse me. I'm looking for Dr. Roll. Roll, what are you doing? I was... I was... What did you put in this hyperspray? It... I was... I took some... Just a little. I took... I'm detecting... Terrakine, Bicardi, and Wolfenolog. Quite the drug cocktail roll. This could have killed you. Lieutenant, the amount of pain I'm in is inconceivable. The Vidian drugs aren't working. And that gives you the right to steal from sickbay? That violates several medical... This whole ship is dying and you think I care about medical protocol? Lieutenant, lower your voice. Lieutenant... Please give me the hyperspray. Get back on that bio bed. We can get Dr. Sharp. She can use a Delta Wave inducer to get you to go to sleep. You don't think we tried that already? The pain! You think it's just you? I'm in so much pain right now that I can't stand up straight. But we have to stay active. We have to keep our minds focused on staying alive. Give it to me! Ah! Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, you broke the hyperspray! Security to sick bay, on the double! I'm... I'm so sorry... 
for everything. I know, Roll. It's okay. Just put the phaser down and we'll forget Forgive everything. Me. The pain. Roll, no. Computer, deactivate phaser weapons. <laughs> Roll! <laughs> doctor! Don't you doctor me. I'm going to give you an extended quotation of the entire Starfleet Code of Ethics if you don't. Oh my god. What happened here? He, he needed drugs. I wouldn't let him have them. So he took out a phaser and, and... he tried to kill himself. He just needed to make the pain. Lorak. Lorak, look at me. This wasn't your fault. Roll is... Because of me. Roll's dead. I can't... He's not dead. I have a pulse. Dr. Sharp, we were called sickbay. Security. You're very welcome. Help me get this man on a bio bed. Yes, sir. Yes, doctor. Right away. This is really bad. He's going to need full torsal reconstruction, artificial heart, vascular regeneration. Get someone else to do it, doctor. What? Nurse Rojan to sick bay. Our conversation about Ensign Enderby isn't over. Those Klingon antigens could save this ship. This is over. We're not killing a member of this crew. Enderby's already stage two. He'll be dead within the hour anyway. I swore an oath. Wait, are you saying there's a cure? What's Brill Enderby have to do with it? I think they're talking about killing him. Great bird. We'll talk about this in your office, Doctor. Sir, may I have a word? Sure, come on. How are you feeling, Lieutenant? Are the pain meds- Permission. Request permission to be relieved of duty, sir. What? Why? Didn't you hear my inspiring speech? I need every able-bodied crewman at their- Sir, I'm in so much pain right now, I can't focus on my duties. I'm a liability to you and the captain. Lorak, if this is about Rawl- It isn't. Alex, you've given up, haven't you? As long as you wear that uniform, Mr. Lorak, you will stand your ground and you will comport yourself according to- I'd like to write a letter to my parents, sir. I'd like your permission, sir, to be excused to compose a final message to my family. Go. Write your letter. That's an order. Thank you, sir. But Lorak- Sir? I've ordered you to your quarters, Lieutenant, but you are still on duty, and you will continue to be Chief Engineer Alexander Lorak of the USS Excelsior until the moment this ship dies. Do I make myself clear? Yes, you do. Yes, I do. Sir. Dismissed. Yes, sir. No. I can find a doctor who's willing to. No, you won't. Drawing a phaser on me, doctor? I'm pretty sure that forfeits your moral high ground. It's set to stun. You know if you knock me unconscious now, I'm never waking up. Not unless someone goes forward with Mr. Enderby's surgery. You mean his murder? Do you think we could debate the semantics in a court-martial somewhere? You know, after we've cured the phage... I won't allow. What the? Jehoshaphat! Ensign Perelson, what happened? Uh, it was Brecken, sir. He and two of his men decided to bring in Ensign Enderby themselves. They overpowered us, sir. I see. Computer, locate Ensign Enderby. Duvan, we heard phaser fire. What's happening here? And why is anyone on this ship interested in Ensign Enderby? Captain! Lieutenant Yubari told me you were incapacitated. She did. And I would guess that she told you you were in command, and told you something about antigens we could harvest from Ensign Enderby. She lied! You lied, Lieutenant? I'm sorry. Did she mention to you that harvesting those antigens would be fatal to Mr. Enderby? As a matter of fact, she did. Then why is it even being discussed right now? It has gone beyond that, Captain. Dovin was trying to order me to do the procedure when three security officers decided to take matters into their own hands. You did what, Commander? Captain, if I'd have known you'd already vetoed the idea, I... You shouldn't have needed to know that. 
I stayed on the planet too long. I didn't want to face what was happening up here. Wanted to stay in my research. In logic. In control. Yubari, you're relieved. Dovan, Perelson, with me. Security. Send all available teams to Ensign Enderby's quarters. Apprehend Ensign Brecken and his accomplices. Lieutenant Palby here, sir. Fights are breaking out all over the ship. We're reporting phaser fire on decks 3, 4, and engineering. We don't have anyone left to send to your location. Damn it. Acknowledged. Cortez out. Let's move it, people. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Captain. Roll? Is that you? What? I'm alive? Roll, what happened to you? Were you shot? Yes. Who the hell shot you? An idiot. You shot yourself? It seemed like a good idea at the time. There are no more bio beds left. Scoot over and I'll sit on yours. I've got a better idea. Help me up and walk me to the holodeck. We'll play a one-on-one -on -one game of Parisi Squares. You're joking. How funny can a man be who just shot himself with a phaser? The hole in your chest is barely cauterized. Your vitals aren't stable. I'm dying of the phage. My vitals aren't supposed to be stable. And actually, it hurts less now that I've burned off half my upper body. You're not going to cheat again, are you? All we want is access to the cure. There is no cure. The price is too high. That's not for you to decide. She's the captain. We deserve to live. She's unfit for duty. This isn't how the crew of the Excelsior should be remembered. Don't you all see? We deserve more. What are you saying? That you've already given up hope? The captain doesn't want us to live. It's begun. We're too late. No. We can harvest his antigens. Get the process started. Captain, still in command. Stand back. If people don't settle down right now, the next one I fire won't be a warning The shot. commander's firing on us. Dovan, look out. Ah! Captain. <laughs> Captain, can you hear me? It <laughs> Do the fatigue. Everyone. Each other's throats. Captain, this has become such a, a nightmare. It's like a dream. Death is true. Diagnostic and correction program complete. Simulation terminated. What? What the? Cortez to Excelsior. Report. Berylson here, Captain. Everything is quiet on the ship. Has the simulation ended? Simulation? What? What? What simulation? In a few moments, your minds were clear. The memory drugs will wear off, and you will remember how events actually transpired. Right. I beamed down with the away team. We fired up Gavi's program. She told us about the phage simulation. A last relic of the Vidians here. Something left here so that we might remember and understand what happened to them in their final days. I beamed down with the rest of the senior staff, and we all plugged ourselves in. 
but it felt so horrifically real. Far more real than a holodeck program. As stated previously, particle synthesis produces far more authentic sensations than holographic. But I could feel the effects of the phage. I felt like I was dying. I put a phaser to my chest because I couldn't take the pain. I know that I speak for everyone when I say that we did not expect this simulation to be so intense. So the Vidians didn't modify the phage to infect other races? They tried, but were not successful. Thank goodness. On behalf of the Vidian people, I thank you for experiencing this simulation. It was created by the Vidians as a means of understanding their situation. Before you leave here today, think about how you responded and how the people around you responded. Please think about your actions the next time you make judgment about the Vidian people. In the end, the Vidians were good people, forced to make desperate choices. If you would like to experience this simulation again... No! Gavi, thank you for sharing this with us. Cortez to Excelsior. Six to beam up. Captain's Log, Supplemental The simulation gave us valuable insight, not only into the Vidian people, but into ourselves as well. The question is, where do we go from here? I call this meeting to address what happened during the Vidian simulation. I want everyone to know that, in my log, I have stated only that the simulation was intense and that we have learned a great lesson about the Vidians' experience of the death of their race. I did not go into any detail about the actions any of us took. As Gavi said, the Vidians were good people who were forced to make desperate choices. Perhaps, subconsciously knowing that this was a simulation, we did things we would not normally have done. Perhaps, we found ourselves acting differently due to Vidian influence or because of the brutal, mob-minded caricature the simulation made of what I know to be our noble and humane crew. Or perhaps this was us at our worst. Sir, I would never steal painkillers, no matter how much pain I was in. That wasn't the person I am. And I would never just give up like that. I'd fight with my last ounce of strength. That wasn't the person I am either. And Alcar... I'll certainly disagree with you from time to time, but I would never draw a phaser on you. It was so violent. That wasn't the person I am. Enough, everyone. View what happened as a gift. It's what life doesn't normally give us. A second chance. Now that we know what we'll be tempted to do when things get desperate, we'll be prepared for it when the time actually comes. Do not look poorly on yourselves or your crewmates. Think of what happened as a dream. Now, you've all been through a lot today. As of this moment, you're all off duty. Get some rest. Dismissed. Deck 12. Captain? Yes, Dovan? Rawl and Yubari have scheduled the Parisi Squares rematch for the day after tomorrow. Would you like to join us? Like I said, Commander, space is dangerous enough as it is. Well, I don't know about the rest of them, but I know this. That was exactly the person I am. Yes. Me too. How do we get past this? Past what we could have done? For shame, Commander. You're asking how we get past ourselves. The answer to that's easy. Wherever you go, there you are. So, we live each day like it could be our last? Sound advice. When is that Parisa Squares match again? Day after tomorrow, 1900. I'll be there. I'll replicate an ion mallet for you. I'll bring my own. So you do play... See you on the court, Commander. In that special edition of Star Trek Excelsior, Rachel Cortez was played by Elise Kralik. 
Alcar Devan, Larry Phelan, Alex Lorak, Sam Gillis, Alex Roll, Michael Liebman, Asuki Yubari, Caitlin Haney, Melissa Sharp, Emily Potter, Gavi, Janet Green, Kenesh Adal, Carla Bandera, Crewman Harkless, Stephen Haney, Chief Hermes, Thomas Barnes, Pachik Rota, Alex Keyes, Kabir, Gary Colbaum, Nurse Mike Hennessy, Security Officer Pearlson, Gareth Browley, Security Officer Brecken, Chris Bainbridge, Random Crew Member Number One, Thomas Barnes, Random Crew Member Number Two, Nick Broich, Random Crew Member Number Three, Keith Michaels. Executive Produced and Adapted for Audio by Mike Hennessy and James Haney. Co-producer Alex Keyes. Post-production, Gary Colbaum, James Magata, Mike Hennessy, and Anthony Schaefer. Narrator, Mike Hennessy. Original story by Chris Chan Roberson. Original music by Samuel Gillis. Additional credits available on site. Special thanks to Mike Mitchell, Michael Hudson, the Excelsior role-playing game, Bravo Fleet, and Gene Roddenberry. No infringement is intended against Star Trek, which remains the property of CBS Paramount Television. Be sure to tune in in January for the beginning of Star Trek Excelsior Season 3, The Sword of Damocles. This has been an Excelsior production.